calling this meeting of the Board of Education to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. So but, moved. Thank you. And that's Ms. Downey. Do I have a second? Yes, Ms. Costin. All in favor of the consent agenda? That passes 7-0. Okay. We are going straight into the public hearing. I assume you're all here for the strategic plan, as Michael Joseph talked about. So, um, so I don't know where Karen is, but we have a lot of people, so I want to get started. So let's start with our GHS student government. Yay. And this is their inaugural meeting. I've had the pleasure of meeting them um, at XCOM at Greenwich High School, but here they are. Welcome guys. Good evening, Chair Stowe, Dr. Jones, member of, of the board. My name is Mitch Goldstein and I'm the student body vice president. I truly can't express how grateful I am to be speaking tonight. Almost a month ago, the elected officers of student government met at Greenwich High to discuss our goals for the year. One idea that seemed to be brought up repeatedly was the need for an increase in school spirit at Greenwich High School. With masks, cohorts, and plexiglass dividers, the past three years have not been the best for students. So this year, we've been very busy trying to make our school feel less like a sterile learning environment and more like a warm community. Firstly, two weeks ago, the Office of Student Activities hosted a freshman social. All freshmen were invited to attend the social where they could play carnival games, hang out with friends, and get to know each other. Then this past Saturday, we started off homecoming week with our homecoming dance. Once again, our student center was used to provide students with an opportunity to dance and have fun. Following the dance, we kicked off our homecoming spirit week with USA Day on Monday and Country versus Country Club Day on Tuesday, which was surprisingly popular. On Wednesday, we had Senior Dress Up Day, which is always a favorite of the senior class. Today was Pajama Day, and as we speak, the senior class is sponsoring a dodgeball tournament down the road at GHS. Finally, as we head into the homecoming football game, we will have Cardinal Apparel Day and a pep rally in the Carnival Stadium during school. To conclude our homecoming week, our varsity football team will play Southington this Saturday in our stadium. This year, I'm thrilled to say that we've noticed more kids participating in homecoming events than in years prior. And we are excited to see how this increased sense of school community and unity continues to grow throughout the year. On the note of school community, this year, each class is planning to host at least two events in order to foster a more unified school environment. Currently, the senior class is planning a movie night. And while the specifics are still being worked out, we want students to be able to bring blankets and chairs and watch a movie on the field with their friends. The other classes events are still in the works and I will have more information on their events next month. To conclude, I want to talk about my personal goals as student body vice president for the year. To do that, I thought it would be best to start from the beginning of the year. A few weeks ago, when I walked into the school, I was thrilled that almost all the negative reminders of the pandemic had been removed. While I was happy about this, I knew that in my position, I had been given the responsibility to make sure the current GHS environment feels more similar to the one that existed prior to the pandemic. So this year, I hope to make the GHS community a more spirited, inviting one. And I'm thrilled to have been given this opportunity. And over the coming year, I'm eager to work with the Board of Education, GHS faculty, and the student body to make our school a more vibrant place. On behalf of my peers, I want to thank the board for the opportunity to speak tonight. And now it is my honor to pass the mic over to our student body president, Isabella Gaga. Good evening, Chairman Stowe. I'm a little short, one second. <laughs> Good evening, Chairman Stowe, Dr. Jones, and members of the board and meeting attendees, a lot of us today. My name is Isabella Gaga, and I am proud to announce that I will be serving Greenwich High School as this year's student body president. Mitch and I are so grateful to be speaking for all of you today as the spokespeople of our beloved Greenwich High School. As we continue to move away from the dreaded COVID, dare I say the name, I am finally relieved that we are approaching a sense of normalcy. In this coming year, Mitch and I will work alongside XCOM to unite our student community after two years of Google Meets, one-way corridors, plastic dividers, and masks. 
Initiatives fostering school spirit through student activities will be critical in supporting our school norms and traditions that we hold so dear. This year is set, the goal of this year is to set new precedents for future classes. This is the year we establish Greenwich High School as the beating heart of our community. This is the year we dreamed of prior to COVID, and this is the year for everlasting change. Similar to last year, student government will utilize classroom reps from each advisor base in a fresher fashion, and we will launch a new system called um, subcommittees dependent on issue-based um, conflicts we see within the school, and they will be related to areas such as food services, school spirit, communications, and flex time. Given this new system, I am optimistic that student representatives will be able to dive into community issues and events and participate in more school policy making issues and truly have their voices heard. This will promote targeted change within our school and widen our scope for change. Sorry. <laughs> student um, subcommittees will allow students to participate in what they believe needs to be addressed and provide the opportunity to make a real impact within our educational environment. In collaboration with students, Mitch and I will continue to work to administer any to with the administration to address any student concerns and set forth leadership that listens to their constituents. Beyond that, I aim to continue initiatives from my previous years, such as fundraising, reimagining the student center, midterm final policies, and enhancing food services. With the supportive staff, uh, with our supportive staff advisor, Mr. Silkman, back there. Um, the support from our administration, of course, and the wonderful, wonderful Board of Education, I am optimistic for the future we have in store. I am so excited for the year to come and beyond ecstatic to see what the future brings. Thank you so much and look forward to speaking with you every month um, at the Board of Education meeting. Thank you. Thank you both and welcome again. It's great having you. Okay, next up we will hear from GEA. Lil? Okay, I got this. I got this. All right. <laughs> well, good evening. Board members, our Greenwich parent community, students, GA members, and everyone watching online. My name is Lillian Perrone, proud president of our over nine. Oh, thank you. Um, over 900 GEA members. I first like to thank my negotiations team for many hours of hard work that they put forth in the negotiation process. Robin Cheneau, Chuck Costello, Chrissy Distel. Leanne Hinkle, Kevin Kreuss, Melissa Marchiti, Michelle Gialanda Rosa, Brian Wallach, and David Ong, and Juan, our CEA Uniserve rep. I would also like to thank our Board of Ed, Negotiations Chair, Joe Kelly, Kathleen Stowe, Christina Downey, Dr. Jones, Dr. Budd. I believe we negotiated a fair contract for both sides. I wanna say thank you for your hard work. Um, I anticipate that the board will vote tonight to move the process forward, as well as the RTM and BET, since we were all in the same room and all sat at the same negotiations table to reach this fair contract. Thank you all um, for participating in this process. I'd like to address a few items that are on the agenda tonight, uh, two of them. Uh, school climate survey and GPS strategic school plan and update. Uh, first of all, I noticed um, our parents had over 75% of positive responses in all four areas, including homeschool connection and a strategic metric, welcoming partners in children's learning, adequate opportunities for me to express my concerns and opinions, how confident are your ability to support your child's learning, homeschool connections composite. Next, students feel they are valued members of the school community, 58%. Staff and learning environment, 54%. Now hold on to that, that thought and those numbers. I wanna move into the strategic plan. That was from the survey. So on a strategic plan, 
The mission of Greenwich Public Schools to educate all students to the highest level academic achievement, to enable them to reach and expand their potential to prepare them for productive, responsible, ethical, creative, and compassionate members of society. I want to focus on goal four, increase family and community engagement. Um, on four, I see that from 2022 to 2007, we start with the annual parent conferences and we end up with uh, two pre-K for the high school. My question is this, I'm not arguing the powerful effect of community connections with our parents, but from reading the statistics and the data that was in that chart, where parent satisfaction is close to over 75%, almost 80%, while our students and staff are 58 and 54% respectively. Instead of adding two conferences K-12 with parents, which will add more to the teacher's plate and workload, shouldn't we be focusing on the low student and staff results as our top priority? Goal seven, increase positive working environment. So uh, cabinet members and GPS administration team recognizes that a robust and supportive school climate and culture are essential to the success of our students and schools. GPS leaders prioritize the empowerment and professional growth of all employees. Totally agree with that. Strategy five. How will GPS accomplish this goal? Increase administrator and coordinator support around teacher academic freedom and resource vetting. Talk a little bit about the, the vetting rubric, which is a draft and process. GE knows that this is a new district initiative and we are still learning about it as it is in draft stages. We know this because we met with Dr. Jones and the cabinet members um, this week to discuss its implementation. The district has said there is a first draft and evolving document. GEA has requested that going forward, we must have a seat at the table and allow teacher feedback to be part of the process. That will be, we will be in the trenches actually using the rubric. Bottom line, our teachers are outstanding professionals, highly qualified individuals with multiple degrees. A majority have years of experience. They are educators who have always put their students first and they make students well-being their top priority. Our teachers want to give a wide range of district approved resources and curriculum. They want to know that everything they put in front of the students is vetted and trusted resource. Academic freedom is not teaching whatever you want. It is highly qualified professionals using their expertise to make decisions about which trusted approved resources and lessons work best for the students in their class. Our GEH staff are specialists in their area of expertise, not generalists. GEA looks forward to learning more about the vetting committee and their timeline and effectiveness, as well as ensuring teachers are receiving adequate time in their planning period to incorporate these new steps. In closing, I have no idea what will be coming out in, in the comments tonight, but I do wanna say, um, on behalf of GEA, we've been through, we, everybody in the community, teachers, administrators, we've been through this together. We've stuck together. Things weren't perfect, but we worked it out. We were in school and we have a steady administrative team and we would like to continue working with our administrative team. We've built and collaborated a strong relationship with Dr. Jones. We've hired some new exciting principals. The teachers love their principals. Well, most of them. Um, and it's important for us to have collaboration and work together on this because we are here. This is about our students and what's best for them and they need us. We need to catch up on what they're missing in their learning. We need to help them with stress and anxiety and we need to put them first and do what is best for them. Thank you to the board. 
Thank you, Dr. Jones, and thank you to everyone. Thanks, Lil. Um, up next, PTA Council. Good evening, Dr. Jones, Chair Stowe, Board of Education members. I'm Frances Wunobe, mom of three GPS kids and the 2022-2023 President of PTA Council Greenwich. It's an umbrella organization representing the 15 Greenwich Public School PTAs and their families. I'm honored to speak tonight and remind everyone to please join their school PTA, or in my case, three PTAs. Entering tonight's Board of Education meeting, PTAC takes note of the rallies being held outside. As a nonpartisan, nonpolitical, nonprofit organization, PTAC's mission is to coordinate, communicate, and advocate across the district for our students with our teachers, administrators, and parents. Greenwich Public Schools are for decades and continuing to this day high performing, high achieving, highly ranked, and highly respected rel relative to other school districts in the nation, in Connecticut, and in nearby New York communities. These high standards and achievements are the result of the talent, skills, and professionalism of all the dedicated educational professionals in the Greenwich Public Schools. In partnership, we thank, honor, and support our GPS team who do the hard work every day, especially as we turn the corner beyond the pandemic. Turning to tonight's hot topics, PTA would like, PTAC would like the Board of Education and School Administration to A, continue to make up the pandemic loss and ensure our students continue to achieve and advance academically. We're looking forward to hearing tonight's strategic plan update. B, continue to work with Greenwich, Public, uh, P Greenwich Police Chief Heavey, who's here tonight, to ensure our students' safety and security and find a solution to have on-site presence all day, every day. C, keep focus on ensuring our kids get bused to and from school and sports safely and on time. And yes, I'm one of those families on the tardy part of town, that's bus 25, and all drivers, please remember to stop at least 10 feet away from a school bus and do not proceed until the bus has retracted the stop arm and deactivated the red flashing lights for our kids do not pass school buses. And D, keep up the increased family communication from the district in each school with some parents never having seen the inside of the school building or meeting their teacher in person, the increased communication via phone, email, s'more, and even video message is so important to build back our school community. We believe these basics, school buses, safety, security, scholastic achievement, along with capital projects and the strategic plan are what the BOE should continue to laser focus on without distraction. And as importantly, with the new school year upon us, we welcome new beginnings, new friendships, new connections, and new ideas. Bienvenidos, bienvenu, welcome to the 100 plus new GPS teachers. Yokoso, Huangling Guanling, welcome to the new GHS student body presidents. Falche to the new ninth graders. Benvinda to the new sixth graders. Ahla Wasalan to the new kindergartners. Benvenuta to the new um, preschoolers. You got this. Let's have a great year of learning. In closing, please join our October 7th PTAC public presentation with Dr. Zboy to support National Bullying Awareness Month and the October 25th Mark Brackett presentation with our PTAC DI, which our PTAC DI committee will also mention. And for those celebrating, Shana Tova. Thank you, Francis. Okay, we will now start our public comment. Um, as a reminder, everyone gets three minutes. We would like to hear from the entire list in the first hour, if that's possible. So we'll say the name, the next person, so they can sort of be on deck, keep it moving. We'd also appreciate everyone respecting the time. Karen will give you a minute warning, moving from speaker to speaker without delay. And we'd appreciate, of course, everyone being respectful as we, um, as we are to you. So um, with that, let's get started. Um, Dana Franks, followed by Anna Kostovic. Good evening. Several things have recently come to light that are very concerning for me as a parent. 
I have three boys under the age of eight, and I would like to be home right now reading them all bedtime stories, but my concern with what is happening in our school district has brought me here tonight instead. I would like to start by expressing my sincere gratitude to our North Street School teachers and leaderships who have been nothing but wonderful to my children. Last year, my oldest son got sick at school and his teacher rubbed his back while he threw up at recess. She treated him with love and compassion and I couldn't have asked for a more caring person to spend the days teaching my son. She helped him with his reading comprehension and encouraged him to ask important questions about what he read. The last thing I wanna do is take away from the amazing GPS teachers who truly do the job they were hired to do, care for our children and nurture their growing brains. I have nothing but respect and love for the teachers who have remained focused and professional during these difficult times where the country is divided on nearly every possible topic. With that said, we are all well aware of the viral video of the Cobb assistant principal admitting to hiring teachers with his own political bias. This video is unfortunately just the tip of the iceberg. Parents have been speaking up for the last two years about inappropriate content in the classrooms. And instead of taking those concerns seriously and considering ways to stop it, these parents were gaslit and dismissed again and again. Chairwoman Stowe, last week you were quoted in the Greenwich Times saying, the Board of Education operates in a bipartisan manner and our focus and responsibility is the education of our students. We do not get involved in any political group pushing an agenda. I guess it's election season, end quote. Please understand, parents want a bipartisan education. You are saying the BOE operates in a bipartisan manner, but there is now clear evidence that some teachers have been pushing political agendas in their classroom without consequence. You guess it's election season? I promise you, after November, these concerns will not go away. We now have the results of the Freedom of Information Act requests, and we have seen the politically charged material that has been taught for the last few years. We are simply asking for controversial political topics to be left out of the classroom. Many topics do merit discussion in older grades, but they must be approached in a balanced manner with open discussion and debate without anyone fearing to express their point of view. None of us want to micromanage our children's teachers. I have always put my full trust into our teachers. 30 seconds. I want to continue to do that. We want our kids to be kids. This is not an extremist concept. I sincerely hope that these issues can be addressed quickly and with full transparency to restore the trust in the BOE operations. Please don't just say the right thing, do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anna Kostovic, followed by Joseph Solari. Sorry. We'd like to keep it moving so everyone can going. So please hold your applause if possible. Go ahead, Anna. Then followed by Joseph Solari. Good evening. My name is Anna Kostovic and I'm a parent to three children in our Greenwich Public Schools. I also grew up here and attended Greenwich um, K through 12 public and private schools. I find myself over the past few years doing what my parents never felt the need to have to do. And that is to attend and listen to every single Board of Ed meeting. And it's sad that I say this because I'm doing it as a concerned parent. Dr. Jones, we have been told by you time and time again that parents have full transparency and any form of indoctrination has no place at GPS. Yet what came out of the Costco assistant principal's mouth showed prejudice, discrimination, and political and religious bias. It's shocking and intolerable. This high ranking educator said that he can't get past the parents because we, the parents, shape our kids. His solution? trying to mitigate the influence we have on our own children. These are the people that are putting progressive ideology before education and the love of our youth. These early educational years are a highly impressionable point in our kids' lives. And I believe that most teachers devote their time and work tirelessly to teach our kids to be free thinkers. And we are grateful to every single one of them. We love our schools, we love our teachers. I've been blessed to have some of the most compassionate and caring teachers challenge and support my kids in Old Greenwich School. Unfortunately, Mr. Boland isn't the only educator in our school system that is creating a disservice to our kids. There are more of them and we want them out of our schools. The Board of Ed should instruct school administrators to remove any instructional material that has not been reviewed and approved by majority vote by the BOE. A staggering statistic. More than 50% of Connecticut school children are not at grade level expectations in English and math. Our kids are our future and we are neglecting to teach them. 
We need to go back to basics and get rid of wasting time on politics, sexually explicit material, gender, and race. I don't care what our teachers' ideologies and political beliefs are, as long as they're teaching them reading, writing, and arithmetic. Our, pub our public education system is being hijacked all across the country, but we, the parents, are here to stop this madness. We will not stay silent until we are assured that we can entrust you to make sure that our children are free to develop their own moral compasses. Thank you. Thank you very much. Joseph Solari, followed by Jackie Homan. Can we keep it moving? Joseph, are you here? Are you online? Oh, okay. Joseph Solari, followed by Jackie Homan. Good evening, Board of Education. You know what you're supposed to do tonight, which is do the right thing. I'm ceding my time to Ms. Kim Fiorello. So, um, thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. Uh, I'm State Representative Kimberly Fiorello. Thank you for your time. Um, when I came to the United States, I was in the ESL in a public school system. I love the public school system. I am a product of that. And, um, but the public school system I went to was focused on core knowledge. Okay. Um, I serve on the education committee up in Hartford. And what I want folks to know is that there is a trend that is going away from recognizing parental rights and it's coming up from Hartford. Um, there were bills in education committee as well as in the insurance committee that allows outside adults to bypass the role and the importance of notifying parents. This, you are the body that is closest to the parents here. I urge you to listen to the needs of these parents because there, there is a great desire uh, for these folks to have to be heard. The things that came out of that video that were most disturbing is that the assistant principal mentioned that the agenda is subtle, that they serve the child, not the parents. And for him to suggest that, for him to admit that actually his ability to get his agenda through is harder because the parents are onto him. The refusal of Hartford to take on a parental rights bill, which I proposed, is indicative of how important your role is as the Board of Ed to protect the rights of these parents. The school serves the parents. It is in the civil society, it is the role of the parents. We must see the parents as the primary decision makers for our children. And I, I thank you for your time, thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, next up, Jackie Homan, followed by Peter Scher. Good evening, Board of Education members and Dr. Jones. As you know, I've been coming to these meetings for the last year and a half asking you to stop using profanity laced, sexually explicit, and divisive racial content inside our schools. I've asked you to stop teaching unapproved and therefore illegal curriculum. I've asked you to be honest about the white fragility training that you conducted with administrators. I've been gaslighted and mocked by liberal parents, the local press, and even the previous chairman of this board for making these allegations. But after 10 months of waiting, I've backed up my allegations with the results of a number of Freedom of Information Act requests. I found emails that show how you sidestep the required Board of Education approval process to add the controversial ruler program. I learned about how you accepted gifts. You accepted gifts from radical third party organizations that are attempting to undermine the morality of our children. Now we have this video from Project Veritas that seems to corroborate the things that I've been saying and more, potentially revealing systemic discrimination in the hiring practices. Even though some have chosen to attack the messenger, and the editing of the video, the assistant principal still made all of these allegations in his own words. And like it or not, Project Veritas hasn't lost any court cases over editing. Frankly, I don't understand how you could let it get this bad. I don't understand how you can be in violation of so many of your own policies and procedures and not be doing anything visibly to rectify the situation. I don't understand how we have so many scandals in this district and we still have the same leadership in place. 
if this was corporate America, if this was corporate America, the leadership would be held accountable, especially since this culture appears to be pervasive and driven from the top down. Sadly, our schools have become way too politicized. We've allowed ideology to replace fact in certain classes. We've allowed emotions to replace academics in our schools. Parents are here tonight because we love our teachers and we wanna support our schools. We wanna see a focus on excellent academics. We want politics-free schools. We want a high quality education for our children, not an indoctrination. I hope you take action tonight. You need to put the superintendent and the deputy superintendent on leave while you conduct an independent, independent district-wide investigation of all of the allegations. You need to immediately stop using all the unapproved curriculum and you need to start following your own policies and procedures. And if you aren't courageous enough to take these steps yourselves, then perhaps you should consider resigning from the board so that others can step up and do the hard work for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up, Peter Scher, followed by Kara Philbin. Peter, is he here or is he online? Peter's here online. Oh. Uh, he, he He's ready to talk. Is Peter online? Yeah, can you hear me? Yep, go ahead, Peter. Okay. Uh, good evening, Board of Ed members. Um, I know you're sitting tonight in a difficult meeting. I know that many of you uh, may have uh, personal or political animosities against me, so therefore you may not be listening to what I'm saying, but I hope that tonight you'll set those aside and maybe consider or take in what I'm about to tell you. When I joined the board in 2009, I realized that I had inherited a legacy of many people who had come before me who had built the amazing school system that Greenwich Public Schools is, has been, and is today. Uh, you have a responsibility, the same as I did at that time, to be trustees of this legacy. The school system is in a state of crisis not because of the revelations of Mr. Boland and his hiring practices, although incredibly troubling as they are, and I'm certain you will conduct a complete investigation of his specific acts. And I understand, and I'm probably pretty certain by now, you've received advice from counsel that you need to properly handle yourselves in a way there so that his rights are protected uh, as an employee, but also uh, the rights of the board are protected. I want to talk to you though more about the issue that is much more troubling. If you listen carefully to what Mr. Boland says, and he explains why he was doing what he was doing, that is far and away an ex existential threat to our school system. He made clear that his purpose was, and the purpose of hiring teachers in this way would be that so they could subtly send messages of a political nature to cultivate students to have a particular political point of view when they leave the Greenwich school system. That's an incredibly uh, troubling uh, development. Unfortunately, you as board members have had indicators, even when I was on the board, that this was happening. I can think about uh, the teaching of unapproved curriculum, particularly the white privilege checklist at Western Middle School. You were also aware of it with the miseducation of the American boy being taught at Greenwich High School, and there are many others. As board members, seconds. we knew this was happening. You must protect the school system, and you must separate yourself from the employees, and you must conduct a comprehensive investigation so that the system can be brought back into balance and compliance with your existing policies. I hope you will take this advice on board. Thank you very much, Peter. Kara uh, Philbin, followed by Gail Lauridson. I'm speaking as a parent. For the, per first for the past year and a half, I've been trying to warn people and it took a PV video to prove it true. The GPS leadership, district, GEA, BOE, PTAC, the Greenwich Alliance, and 
League of Women Voters are all working together, engaging in discriminatory practices, politicizing our schools, over-sexualizing our children, and embedding transformative SEL, the new SEL, into our core academics. You are pushing all of this, but you are not helping. Instead, you are harming our children and families. I know because at Western, in an attempt to teach suicide prevention, instead, they taught kids to go into their parents' medicine cabinet and take too many pills and how to find the veins in your wrists, in their wrists. These programs thought to be helping children have morphed into misguided, twisted versions of their original self. It's not a surprise that suicide rates are up for 18 and under, given what kids are learning in these misguided programs. When parents email the school to have the SEL curriculum sent home, the principal replies with legal ease that parents can't receive second step proprietary materials to be utilized with students. This curriculum does not go home, but is handed out and collected. I gave a BOE speech. If you can't or won't send learning materials home, don't teach it. Shame on the BOE for not doing their job to review and approve curriculum. And if administration respected families and kids, you wouldn't sign a contract preventing curriculum from being sent home. Our families and children deserve better. Our students are underperforming despite being the top funded district in Connecticut because of poor district BOE and town leadership in a broken system. Soon our BOE will be rubber stamping CABE state policies. My advice to parents for your older kids, start a countdown, you're almost out. For your younger kids, don't stick around for the sports and AP classes. Your child's health and well-being are more important. Choose an education for your child that inspires a love of learning. Out school, homeschool, or find an independent school that partners with parents. Um, know that most of the private and prep schools have also taken the tainted COVID ESSER funding and are pushing transformative SEL and divisive DEI over teaching personal agency. Kimberly Fiorello, who spoke a year ago at a BOE meeting encouraging parents to be vigilant 30 seconds. and works tirelessly to educate our community, hosted Ian Rowe, an immigrant, fair advisor, and Harvard MBA who believes children should be empowered to develop agency. Agency is the force of one's free will guided by moral discernment. According to Roe, developing agency is the alternative to the debilitating blame the system and blame the victim narratives. It transcends our political difference and beckons all who dare to envision lives unshackled by present realities. Time. Thank you, Kara. Uh, Gail Lordson, followed by Amy Booth. Good evening. When you do surveys, is that, ooh, okay. When you do surveys, collecting families' personal data to determine the climate in the public schools, do you ask how they feel about teachers who are hand-picked adherents to the blind groupthink? Make no mistake, the climate within the walls of our schools is a direct reflection of the climate out in the community. Our community is aware of the comments Mr. Boland made freely to an undercover journalist. He does not represent and has damaged our town. At a minimum, a public vote should be taken to make his leave unpaid, effective immediately. Mr. Boland brought to light a practice of indoctrination that fundamentally does not belong in schools and which is not surprising to many who have remarked on it in this very room for the past two years. Board members, it is time to open your ears. Ignoring your constituents has resulted in townwide embarrassment. I dare say, this is not who we are. Board members, you may be tempted to believe it's enough to release a statement that discrimination and political indoctrination are not our policy. We've reached a point where we need assurances. We need to see that enforceable action is taken to require our teachers to teach fundamentals. They are not paid to fill our children's heads with personal ideology. And, in, and the content of our school's curriculum must be carefully scrutinized, all controversial, racist, sexualized, and frivolous content must be replaced with academics. With nearly, 
with nearly 60% of our students performing below grade level, the status quo is unacceptable. This is a wake up call to parents who think Dr. Jones is doing a good job. In some ways she is, but in light of record poor student performance and a nationwide administrative embarrassment, how can any thinking person just accept all is okay? Our job is not to protect Dr. Jones, but to ensure she does things she says she's doing. She must be held accountable for her actions. Multiple instances of rogue infractions in the last 18 months are not acceptable. 30 the seconds. fact of those infractions is evidence enough that all is not okay. We cannot accept words alone. Only a truly independent, unbiased, uncompromised investigation will be acceptable. Finally, I want to acknowledge the many excellent teachers in this district who do wonderful things for our children on a daily basis. Their efforts are made more difficult by certain disgraceful people among us. Parents, please remember to give those teachers a lot of love daily. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up, Amy Moose, followed by Alyssa Vados. Hello, Dr. Jones, <clears throat> excuse me, and Board of Ed members. We are Alyssa Vanoss and Emmy Muth, co-chairs of the PTAC Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. We were initially introduced last year as a special committee, but were voted in later this year, later in the year as a standing committee. We are excited to work with you all, all of the PTAC, the PTA committees, the First Sec Selectman's Diversity Committee, JOMO, the YWCA, and other Greenwich community organizations. Our mission has not changed. Our, we are committed to fostering an overall sense of belonging within the GPS community by intentionally building relationships and inviting diverse perspectives. The DEI committee will partner with local PTAs to create programs, initiatives, and events that allow for meaningful conversations and lead to clear actions for creating truly a truly inclusive environment. The DEI committee will collaborate with GPS PTAs to find the most effective ways to partner with all families to help every student reach their full potential. This month, we launched, launched the PTAC DEI website, the Greenwich Culture Collective, where we will offer content that celebrates our multicultural community. We've shared content with the schools for Hispanic Heritage Month with options for activities and events to par participate in and age-appropriate book sele selections that have been co-curated with the Parrot Library. Going forward, we will look we will update book collections that are relevant to the Heritage Months and in hopes that all of our parents, teachers, and students can learn more about each other and be more aware of how our commonalities and differences unite us. And finally, we will add, to, we will add any events in and around Fairfield County that might bring more of us together in celebration and understanding of different cultures. This information will be shared through each of the local PTA school newsletters. Over the first three months of this school year, our focus will be on ensuring we have reps at every school, partnering with PTAC's Curriculum Enrichment Committee to work toward more diverse curriculum-based opportunities, working with all DEI reps to add content to morning announcements, and collaborating with local organizations in Greenwich around diversity initiatives with all, for all GPS students. We will keep you all updated about other initiatives and longer-term goals at each meeting. Although we are very optimistic about the steady impact we can have through our school reps, greater impact to our curriculum and school communities can truly only happen with collaboration from the Board of Education and Administration. We appreciate that pushing ahead with new and diverse experiences in our current climate can be challenging. But for the long-term benefit of our children to become adults in a multicultural world, we implore a more active approach from the BE, BOE and administration. As we stated at previous BOE meetings, we were very excited that GPS had been chosen to receive a gift from Common Circles, show a foundation for Dimensions and Testimony, a million dollar artificial intelligence installation that was well aligned with our curriculum on the Holocaust and genocide. Ultimately, the barriers that Common Circles encountered in Greenwich resulted in the organization choosing to partner sol solely with a White Plains School District, instead who widely embraced this opportunity across learning disciplines. As seen recently, there are a multitude of areas for GPS and the town of Greenwich to focus diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. We are excited to hear how the new state mandated Black and Latino Studies class is doing at GHS. We are thrilled that con Connecticut continues to be a leader in diversifying its education by becoming the first state to pass a state-funded mandate to teach Asian American and Pacific Islander history in public schools at all levels. This requirement is part of a bill Governor Lamont signed into law in May 
after it passed near unanimously in the Senate and with overwhelming bipartisan support in the House. As the, I, we were, we have been- They signed up separately. You. Please continue. As the requirement will take effect in 2025, we are eager to hear how GPS is going to move ahead in its development. We continue to encourage diverse and transparent hiring practices in order to increase representation across all races, religions, cultures, gender, and sexual orientation. Sure. To advance educational equity and consistency across GPS, we encourage the district to strengthen assured experiences in all schools. We can further combat socioeconomic-based disparity in our children's education by formulating strategies to incorporate more curriculum enrichment across the board, regardless of individual school PTA budgets. We continue to encourage the Board of Education to increase accessibility to your meetings. These meetings are important and affect all families with and without hearing, sight, and language needs. The ability to provide in-person resources would be so beneficial. Of note, we will highlight for those of you who don't know that recorded BOE meetings are placed on YouTube with the option of, of assessing, accessing a multitude of languages. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. We encourage you all to attend Mark Brackett's presentation on Ruler and the Importance of Emotional Intelligence on Tuesday, October 5th. We hope you We hope you all explore and celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. For those of you celebrating Rosh Hashanah next week, we wish you all a sweet and happy new year. As a parent, I would like to use the rest of my time to say that we support our 30 superintendent and the administration, and that we hope that everybody in this room will use the same respect we have used to listen to you speak, that you have have poorly done listening to us. Thank you. Thanks very much. Next up, Janet McMahon, followed by Jamie Waters. Good evening. My name is Janet McMahon, and I'm speaking tonight as a parent of two children in Greenwich Public Schools. I'm very pleased to hear the positive results of the school climate survey. Hearing that almost 60% of students in grades 3 through 12 feel that school is interesting, useful, and important, up from 55% last year, is commendable. Similarly, 84% of parents felt they were welcomed partners in their child's learning, and 79% of parents felt there were adequate opportunities to express concerns and opinions about important issues impacting their child. These are incredible metrics that the GPS administration and staff should be proud of, and the GPS community should be celebrating. Instead, there was an ugly partisan rally outside attended by a vocal few who continue to terrorize our teachers, politicize our schools, polarize parents, and derail our school board meetings. During the past eight years, my kids have been in the Greenwich public school system. We've been happy with the academic rigor of the curriculum taught by scores of wonderful teachers. I consider myself an active participant in my children's education, and never once have I suspected or experienced any indoctrination by any teacher or administrator. Neither have I encountered anything remotely close to CRT or any of the political propaganda that these same protesters allege at every single board meeting. Excuse me. It should surprise no one, but the vast majority of this vocal group does not even have kids in the GPS and or have any kids at all. Indeed, of the 67 Republicans who signed this letter calling to cancel Dr. Jones and Dr. Carabillo, less than a quarter actually have children in our schools. That said, GPS administrators and educators, we see you and we appreciate you. While Mr. Boland's comments were reprehensible and inappropriate, we know that he is an outlier. We know that the vast majority of you are selfless, so excuse me, are selfless, ex empathetic souls who sometimes put our own children before yourselves and your own families. We know how thankless your job is most days. Your lesson plans are scrutinized. Every book you assign, every email you send is overanalyzed. It sucks the joy out of teaching and maybe even your spirit sometimes. I know it's difficult, but hang in there. Keep teaching and continue to inspire, guide, and motivate our children. Dr. Jones and Dr. Carabillo, the overwhelming majority of Greenwich Public School parents stands with you. I speak for many when I say that you are doing an excellent job and have weathered so many crises with courage, grace, and wisdom. It's a shame that not even two years ago, those angry few who, 
praised you for allowing our children to return to school in person when most schools around the country were still in lockdown. Do not listen to the noise. Continue to do the good work you've been doing. And if you ever doubt yourself, just look at the results seconds. of the school climate survey. Some of us remember what it was like years ago when we had a revolving door of superintendents. Thank you for bringing back stability and continuity to the GPS leadership. We need you and we're much better off with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up, James Waters followed by Laura O'Hagan. I'm gonna ask that everyone please stays quiet during speeches. That's, we do that as a board and we expect the same um, level of decorum and this. Otherwise we will have to ask you to go. Thank you, James. Go ahead, James followed by Lorelai O'Hagan. Excuse me, excuse me. If you cannot be respectful, please leave. Okay, excuse me. I, I will, I will, there are police here. I will ask you to leave if you continue and they will escort you out. So I'm going to ask, we've kept it together. Please be respectful. All right, I think you can go. James, please go followed by Lorelai O'Hagan. Thank you. Good evening, Ma Madam Chair, Dr. Jones, members of the Board of Ed. I'm James Waters, North Miami's parent and an Eastern parent now, member of the RTM and a member of the Old Greenwich School Building Committee. Tonight, I speak for myself with inputs from constituents across town. You face big decisions this year and we thank you for your service. These have been rocky times and we're all thankful for our great teachers, administrators and your steady leadership. As I've gathered input, parents repeatedly mention four topics. They are addressing learning loss, making progress on critical school capital projects, enhanced school security, and completing the investigation and taking action on the hidden camera video. COVID learning loss is affecting schools across the nation, including Greenwich. I'm pleased Greenwich is doing far better than most, but we must continue to do more. We shouldn't be content with recovery. We want our students to accelerate on the progress we've made on academic excellence and helping our kids become great citizens. We'll only get there with steady leadership. A surprising number of residents are engaged on school infrastructure. People are tired of crumbling schools. The rebuilding of Central is a top priority and I encourage you to carefully consider the important need to renovate OGS and JC, make long overdue ADA improvements and complete Cardinal Field Phase Two, the GHS track, the Western Fields and Cellular Service at GHS. Please work with the BET in advance of approving the FY24 capital budget request. Let's learn from the path from the past and work to create a path. I'd like to see us avoid controversy through constructive and early dialogue. With a potential capital request of $130 million, there will be trade-offs. We'll only get there with steady leadership. Third, thank you for taking action on school security in recent weeks. I was proud to support you in the RTM where all but six members voted yes. I hope you'll complete the conversation on campus monitors and get those in place. Parents were happy for approval of police patrols and security hardware, but don't want safety monitors kicked down the road. We'll only get there with steady leadership. Finally, please complete a thorough investigation into the hidden camera video and take action. I don't think anyone here supports indoctrination of our kids or hiring discrimination. With a number of ongoing investigations, your provision of due process, transparent reporting of the findings, and appropriate action are critical to putting this disgusting event behind us. I thank Dr. Jones for taking on yet another difficult but important 30 assignment seconds. and want to convey my trust in this board's judgment, which have been reasonably earned over the last few years. Please don't let politics sway your judgment and creep further into and around our schools. It's hurting everyone, including our teachers and kids. Let's just do the right thing. While everyone wants their agenda first at the expense of others, Please stay focused and keep moving forward. Doing the opposite hurts our schools, our kids, and our town. We are only going to get there with steady leadership. Time. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Lorla O'Hagan, followed by Amanda Dombrowski. Is Lorla here? Is she online? Let me see. I don't see her online, do you? Lorelai O'Hagan. You don't see her here? Okay, no, that's okay. We will skip her. Um, Amanda Dombrowski, followed by David Lancaster. Do you see either online? 
sorry, Amanda Don Dombrowski. Um, I'm looking. Um, I don't. How about um, David Lancaster? That's da is that David? Yeah. Okay. If if we see the other two pop up, we can come back. But thank you. Go ahead, David. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Dave Lancaster. I'm a member of the RTM, but tonight I'm speaking solely as a private citizen. I have lived in Greenwich all my life and attended Greenwich schools. Greenwich schools have always enjoyed an excellent reputation. Unfortunately, this is rapidly changing. A growing number of parents are getting wise to unauthorized curricula, agenda-based content, and the lack of transparency and gaslighting from school leadership. Combine this with dropping academic scores, the highest cost per student in the state, and parents are increasingly unhappy. The Project Veritas video validated what many parents in this town have been saying about indoctrination in our schools with an added revelation of bigotry in its hiring processes. Not only is discrimination in hiring a crime, but guess what? Add this to more bad press about investigations and lawsuits and Greenwich residents are embarrassed and fed up with the school, what their schools are being portrayed in the news. It's time for the BEE to deal with this situation by doing the following. Number one, enforce existing town and state laws regarding hiring. Number two, approve all curriculum as required by your own BEE policy. Number three, develop a culture of transparency. Great schools have nothing to hide. Four, expunge all, expunge all agendas from the schools, no matter how clever or su their subtlety is and their camouflage, including SCL. Five, get back to basics of reading, writing, and arithmetic so our children can get the academic education they deserve. This is not a Democrat nor a Republican issue. The demand for accountability is growing and is coming from an increasingly broader range of political viewpoints. A poll this month in the New York Times from Siena College revealed that 70% of its respondents opposed the inclusion of agendas in elementary education and a solid majority opposed it in middle school and it was equally divided among parties. These issues are not going to disappear by labeling people who speak out against this as fringe or by hiding the truth and hoping the problems will go away. True academic learning is almost entirely a result of great teachers, which we have of all ages and backgrounds and a substantive curriculum devoid of all agendas. I know politicians, especially some in my own party, like to avoid these cultural issues and stick to economics. But if these cultural issues are not addressed now, they will only get worse. 30 seconds. To the point where repairing town, school, and BOE reputation, reputations may not be possible and the economic life of its citizens will be negatively impacted. This is the time for real leadership and courage. Do what's right for both Greenwich students and the town. Fix this mess finally or step aside and let someone else do it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up, Katie Yu, followed by Kathleen Brady. Katie Yu and then Kathleen Brady. There's Katie. Yep, there you are. Okay. And then Kathleen Brady. Good evening. My apologies. Just a little bit of a heads up. It's sometimes hard to hear in the back when the names are being read. So I'm sorry for being late. I actually didn't hear that. Okay. Good evening, members of the board, Dr. Jones and others. Tonight, I would like to address the consideration of security monitors at the elementary and middle school level. While I'm frankly glad to see the passage of funding to address security at our schools, I am concerned about the two companies that are currently under consideration as security monitors in our schools. I would like to draw attention to the fact that at least one of the security companies only requires that security monitors have the equivalent of a GED in order to be a security monitor. As a long-standing parent in this district, I recall when there were questions about adding SROs at the high school. While I generally have found them to be a positive addition to the overall security at the high school, I feel that it is a mistake to not consider the significant differences between high school students and elementary and middle school kids. 
I'm sure that any teacher here today will tell you that elementary school kids can be impulsive, sometimes a bit overactive, overactive and boisterous. Teachers at elementary schools understand that in many ways, this is their first time learning about important behaviors, norms, and protocols. And I'm sure that middle school teachers will add to that the natural changes that occur with middle school kids behaviorally, hormonally, I'll leave it at that. Add to the fact that our teachers have received training to understand the needs of all students, including those with IEPs and behavior plans. And as educators, they are coming from a place of wanting to educate and engage with their kids. Should we assume that this will be exactly the same starting point for monitors? And can we assume that this will be the case if there isn't adequate training and a baseline educational level? In summary, I would like there to be consideration of this. While I understand the importance of being fiscally prudent, I think it is just as important that our district partners with a company that understands and is familiar working with a wide range of kids. Uh, I hate to mention this, but as we've seen with our recent issues occurring with our new cost savings with the bus partners, sometimes you get what you pay for. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Next up, Kathleen Brady, followed by George Sharipa. Members of the board and Dr. Jones, my name is Kathy Brady. I'm here today as a GPS parent to thank the board and Dr. Jones for their dedication and commitment. The first time I met Dr. Jones was early in her tenure when she came to the First Church in Old Greenwich to listen and address parent concerns regarding special education. The meeting went on for hours as various parents talked of their concerns. While everyone was seated, Dr. Jones stood for the duration, in heels and a suit, I might add, taking notes and listening to all. I don't recall any other administrator reaching out to the community in this manner. I tell this story because I believe that this is a small example of the work that Dr. Jones has done to understand and serve the school district and most importantly, the children. What I have seen is a superintendent who operates with integrity, grace, and a can-do attitude. She has been the superintendent for three years during which she has successfully navigated a pandemic opening the schools and providing badly needed in-person education. I don't think I need to remind people that other districts adjacent to ours were not successful in this endeavor. She runs a school district with 15 schools, 8,600 students and thousands, thousands of employees. Prior to her arrival, we had over 13 superintendents in over 20 years. Each time progress was made, a superintendent would leave and we would start again. Needless to say, the constant turnover was not productive to long-term planning, and she has been a strong and stabilizing force. The current investigation regarding the COSCOB vice principal is obviously necessary and important, and needless to say, it was shocking. I wanna thank the board for their service and ask the board members to let the investigation play out, have all the answers, get all the facts. Don't shoot first and ask questions later. Now's the time to show support for the whole of the student body. For Dr. Jones and Dr. Cabela as well, to operate in the best interest of all, not just the noisiest. Thank you. Thanks very much. Next up, George Sharipa, followed by Kara Mendelson. Is George here? I don't see him online. Is that you, George? No. <laughs> no, you're just a kid trying to leave. Okay. Um, <laughs> So I see Kara Mendelson online. So let's go to, let's call her up then. Sorry, and then Nerlin Pearson after that. Ms. Mendelson, you uh, can unmute and speak, please. Good evening, Board of Education. My name is Kara Mendelson, and I have four kids in Greenwich Public Schools, two at Greenwich High, one at Eastern, and one at North Mayennes. My husband and I also grew up in Greenwich and attended public schools here. I am a PTA president, but I am speaking tonight as an individual. I am here to express my total gratitude for our schools and the work their teachers, administrators, and coaches do every day. It's impressive. My kids are learning amazing things in a supportive and challenging environment. They love going to school. That's all I can ask for. Thank you to Tony for your leadership. 
thank you to our administrators and thank you to our teachers. Thank you, Kara. Next up, Nerlin Pearson, followed by Jennifer Kutai. Is Nerlin here or is she online? Let me look one second. I don't, I don't, I thought I saw you here, but no. Nerlin Pearson, no? Okay, then going next, Jennifer Kutai, followed by Jill Overlander. Raise your hand if you're online. Uh, I'm looking for Jill or Jennifer Kutai. Hi, I'm here. Okay, go ahead, Jennifer. Hi, um, sorry, I was on mute. Um, my name is Jennifer Kutai, and I'm one of the parents who has spent the last five years speaking at Board of Education meetings on the subject of special education. As a result of my outspokenness, my children were retaliated against, and there were many false statements made about myself, my husband, and my children. I am also one of the parents who signed a 10-4-B complaint. I spoke at almost every BET meeting, and I was one of many who lobbied hard for an outside independent evaluation on the practices of special education across Greenwich Public Schools. And we were successful in our quest for both an outside audit, independent, and more importantly, for systemic change. But the one constant was that we stayed at the table with Dr. Jones. We may have been on opposite sides, but like any good negotiation, you must be at the table with leadership to effectuate change. I'm here tonight to say that if you judge simply by our actions and the progress we have made in special education in this district and look at the rogue personnel who are no longer here, you will see that being at the table with Dr. Jones is paramount to positive change. Parents who are here tonight speaking out against Dr. Jones, ask yourselves if you have ever considered sitting down privately at the table with our superintendent of schools. If you haven't, I would suggest that you reconsider your position. And yes, I'm a Republican too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up, Jill Overlander, followed by Carl Higby. I think Jill is online. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes, go ahead. Madam Chair, Dr. Jones, and members of the board, my name is Jill Overlander, and I'm here to ask you to stay focused on the health and safety of Greenwich students and to reject the ill-founded request to place the superintendent and deputy superintendent on leave. First, I wanna thank all of you, and most particularly the teachers, staff, and administrators, including Dr. Jones and Dr. Carabio, for your efforts and dedication over the past two years to keep Greenwich schools open for in-person learning. These are most challenging times, and the work of school staff is saving lives. As we now know from data, in addition to our own experiences and observations as parents, Pandemic school closures and distance learning erase several years of learning. The isolation resulting from stay-at-home orders and social distancing delayed critical emotional development for many children. These factors exacerbated the already recognized teenage mental health crisis. CDC studies conclude that teen emergency room visits for self-harm and eating disorders increased since before the pandemic. These data points should concern all of us. Schools are the frontline defense for children's mental health. CDC studies have found that being connected at school, defined as the sense of being cared for, supported, and belonging, had an important effect on teen mental health. Recent data indicates that youth with connections to teachers and peers were less likely to report feelings of sadness, hopelessness, and thoughts of suicide. Of the youth surveyed, the CDC found that a majority did not feel connected at school. GPS's strategic plan materials on tonight's agenda highlights the need to increase the percentage of students who report feeling school connectedness, and its own data suggests that 2022 percentages are below target. I'm a parent 
and I support giving parents a voice in their child's educational experience through local school board elections and respectful advocacy on school decisions. It is critical that we as a community counter personal attacks on teachers and administrators in the name of parental decision making. These attacks undermine efforts to create a positive environment for student learning and emotional health with potentially disastrous results to our children who need support. Finally, I want to state, clearly state my support for a welcoming- 30 seconds. Unlawful discrimination in hiring cannot be tolerated. I thank you for investigating hiring practice and providing necessary training. Similarly, the politicization of education and mean-spirited singling out of vulnerable students due to their gender identity or selection of reading material is inconsistent with inclusivity. I know you are very thoughtful about these issues and realize the importance your response will have to the health and safety of students. Time. Thank you very much. Next up, Carl Higby, followed by Dan Quigley. All right, so here we are again. Um, I never got that survey, by the way. I certainly wouldn't give you any straight A's on that one. Um, but I'd like to point out that the vocal few because we outnumbered the people who were, I don't know what they were for, or we can't tell what they were for, but we outnumbered you by a factor of five, okay? So I'd also like to commend T Tony Jones that you have messed up so royally that you have deemed the town necessary to send a dozen cop cars and 20 cops to a board of ed meeting. Great job, okay? I'd like to remind everybody here that she makes the same salary and total comp as the president of the United States, $400,000. OK, uh, look, everybody here loves teachers on both sides of this argument. The problem is not with the teachers. For me, I've written four books. Most people didn't know I could read. But every single one of those books, every single one of them attributes some lesson in my life to a teacher in the Greenwich public school system because they were awesome. The administration is not. Now, we talk about all these things that we're against. What we're against is a pro, you know, the problem is, is there is no, or there's no top cover for this. And every time it is, it's, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a mishap. It's an oversight. Because this is what we stand for here. We're not some fringe group. We're not domestic terrorists. We're parents. I have two, soon to be three kids in this public school system. We want appropriate education, reading, writing, arithmetic, teach my kid how to put an astronaut on the moon, maybe even teach him how to do laundry. We used to do that. We don't do that anymore. Teachers, we want them free from discrimination. If you're discriminated against as a teacher, it is not a safe environment for you. How can our kids have a safe environment if that's not the case? We have the highest paid teachers in the state. We should expect the highest test results in the state. I think that's fair. What are we against? We're against things like, you know, content that our kids are being taught that is so bad that when we print out the content on signs, you don't allow us to bring it into this auditorium. Am I crazy? We don't want open discrimination against religious groups in there, like this guy you had from Costco, who somehow got a shout out as a great administrator before that. All right, we, we don't want our second graders shown erections in schools. I mean, that should have been a no brainer. But you know, a teacher tried to erase mothers and fathers. They would have, ooh, it's important grown up state. Are you kidding me? This is such garbage. I, I'm so fed up with this stuff. And the fact that we have to come here and be all pissed off with signs and hundreds 30 of people, seconds. sure. Um, it, you know, like we just don't want the over-sexualization of our children. We're against <laughs> critical race theory. We're against all this other stuff. Teach my kids reading, writing, and arithmetic. You got to get rid of these turds because they're not helping the solution. Again, everybody here supports our teachers on both sides. We don't support the administration. You no longer get the benefit of the doubt. You now have to prove to us that you're doing right by our kids. Thank you. Next up, Dan Quigley, followed by our last speaker, Aaron Chang. I think Dan is online. Can yep, you bring can you him hear up? Me? Thank you. Can you hear me? Dan. Yeah, can, can you hear me? Go ahead, please get started. Great. Um, thank you, Chairwoman Stowe, Board of Ed members, Dr. Jones, people in the audience. Uh, not often I get the honor of following Carl Higby up, but uh, tonight I get to do that. So that's great. Um, I just wanted to say words of support for the Board of Ed members. You guys have an extremely difficult task. You do not get paid for what you do. You put in countless hours into the well-being 
health and safety and good education of our children. And for it, you get a lot of flack and not many, many thank yous and much appreciated. So first off, I wanna thank you for your work you do. For Dr. Jones, um, Dr. Jones and I have had disagreements in the past on, on issues, but I have always said that of all the things a superintendent could have done the last two years in any town in America, getting our kids back to school as quickly and effectively and efficiently as she did is something that I'll be forever indebted to her for. I have a third grader. He has done really well at Julian Curtis and we applaud your efforts in getting our kids back to school during an unprecedented pandemic. As for the latest issue with the video and the recording of Mr. Boland, there's not one person I've met, Republican, Democrat, liberal, conservative, who applauds what he said. Nobody does. It's across political boundaries. It was repugnant. It was not something that our school system stands for. It was not something that is indicative of how our administrators should behave. And my anticipation is once an investigation is done, this will be discovered to be not an endemic situation, but something that is particularly related to one person. I do not believe that his words are representative of the administrators, teachers, and superintendent or assistant superintendent at all. And I think the means by which that information was procured has to be factored into the discussion. I believe there should be an investigation. There will be an investigation. And upon that full investigation being completed, there is no reason to consider punishing anyone until an investigation is done. Education has been politicized throughout our country. This is a national movement. This is not a local movement. This has been called for over a year ago to get this done. If you want to change and take your country back, you go through your school boards. So this seconds. is something we have to get used to in our society. But I just want to reiterate, Dr. Jones, I think you've done a good job. Continue doing it. Continue pushing forward. Board of Ed members, do what you were elected to do. Get our kids educated well, keep them safe, and keep them in good hands. Godspeed. Thank you. Next up, Aaron Chang. Is Aaron here? Oh, sorry, Miss O'Hagan's back online. She, okay, we just skipped her. You, why don't, while we're waiting for Erin, put Lorelei on, and then Erin will be our last speaker from the list. Great, thanks for giving me an opportunity. Hi, everyone, I'm Lorelei O'Hagan, and thank you to the Board of Ed and everyone who's in the room. I had a feel-good story that I wanted to share at the end. Um, I'm a parent of a kindergartner, and I just wanted to make it very, you know, bring the story to everyone that's in the room. After all of the efforts that have gone on from parents involved in the special ed community and teachers and everyone who was involved in really hearing the issues that people were having with the special ed program over time and really demanding change, I am now the beneficiary at Costco School of the first co-teaching model for kindergartner. And I just wanted to express my gratitude for everyone in the community really understanding that we have so far to go in terms of really understanding and delivering the special ed services that we really deserve. And there are a lot of steps that we need to take. But right now I have a kindergartner who has ADHD because my older son has ADHD as well. And he is really doing well in this class. It's going to be such an amazing opportunity for us to understand how can we deliver the kind of services that we want filtering and screening for things like dyslexia, which my older son has, who's in fourth grade. And we're gonna really be able to catch some of these things and address them early on. I am so thrilled to be in this program. It's a pilot. And I wanted to thank everybody in this room and give everybody a pat on the back for really saying, what can we do? How can we take evidence-based solutions from other places? Who's doing it really well? And how can we implement that and put that into our program? So I am so pleased. I'm saying thank you for that. Um, I also did just want to mention briefly in terms of the discrimination discussions that are going on. I wanted us to be taking a look at some of the issues that we have. Discrimination is real and it's an issue that we are facing. And I would like to say 
let's take an opportunity to learn from this moment and say, we actually have a discrimination problem in our community. In fact, there was a Board of Ed discussion, some of you who are in this room right now, who were not wanting to vote on Title IX. And that was an issue of discrimination against trans people. So I want us to be able to say, yes, discrimination is a problem and we need to do a better job about it, right? The other issue is that we have ADA, schools that are not ADA compliant. That's an issue of discrimination. We also have segregated schools that don't meet the standards of our community for diversity. We also don't have an administration and a teaching staff overall that reflect the diversity of our community. So we do have work to do. So let's not be distracted by this one issue of these very loud squeaky voices complaining about sort of a made up problem. Time. And let's actually Thank deal you with very the much. Please don't be disrespectful. Thank yes, you. Karen is taking the clock. Karen can handle the time. Thank you very much. The last speaker is Erin Chang. Is Erin Chang here? Okay, well then that concludes our public comment. We, um. Just no, that's an hour as well. Everyone, if you sign up. So now we, um, I just want to let you know, we are going to, I'm going to ask for a motion in a moment to go into executive session. I don't know how long that'll be. It's about safety and security. We're meeting with the chief of police. It's obviously very important. You're welcome to stay. You're welcome to go home and tune back in. When we start, uh, when we come back, we'll be addressing uh, committee reports, which includes the superintendent's report. I suspect during that time, we will talk about things like start of school buses and the investigation. Um, but I did want to let you know that we now have, I need a motion to go into executive session. So move. Can I have a second? Karen, all right, can we all show of hands to go into executive session? That passes eight zero, thank you.